Hello and welcome back to a swift look. Happy Friday and let's get into today's show. So it was the video that hit the internet yesterday that really took the Swifty community by storm. And it it was a video of Mr. Travis Kelsey playing a little golf with some friends and jamming out to Bad Blood, which maybe doesn't seem like that big of a deal to people who are either just getting into the Taylor Swift lore or who have become accustomed to Travis Kelsey as a person. But in a weird way, I feel like this is actually very, it says a lot without saying very much, if that makes sense. I'll, I'll get into it. So if you haven't been on the internet or you, or you didn't see the video, there was a um, Instagram story that popped up on Thursday of Travis Kelsey playing a little golf with some of his friends, specifically former NBA player Chandler Parsons. And you know, when you're playing golf with your friends, I think it's very normal to try to do some things to distract your friends while they're trying to hit a golf ball, right? It makes sense. You you want them to play worse than you, so you do things to throw them off their game a little bit. And Travis's friends decided to play a little Taylor Swift, specifically Bad Blood, while, while Travis was gearing up for his shot. Turns out, not only does Taylor Swift not distract Travis Kelsey, it actually makes him a better player, and he actually seems to enjoy listening to a little Taylor Swift while playing golf. So in the video, they're playing the song in the background, Travis shoots an amazing shot, and then proceeds to lip sync to the camera, the words of Bad Blood, not phased in the slightest. In fact, I would argue it actually improved his golf game. And I think in the video, his friends are like, yeah, this backfired on us. Like we, <laughs> we didn't think that playing this song was actually going to make him a better player. We thought it would make him a worse player. And like I said, seems very, uh, doesn't seem like anything too crazy, very innocent video. Like, oh, Travis singing to bad, bad, bad blood. Like that's fun. But I do think there's something larger that we can take from this, which is that Travis Kelsey is just the most relaxed, Conf confident, comfortable man out there. I don't want to play a game of like comparison and comparing Taylor's exes to Travis because I don't think it's fair. I think every person is different. I think every person, every person wants out of a relationship is different. But I think we can all agree that Taylor's most recent ex would not have reacted that way about Taylor Swift being played while he was doing anything at any point in time. Um, like Travis reacted, like there's just no way. And I think this is this moment too, it like perfectly encapsulates why Taylor is dating Travis Kelsey because he's not phased by her. In fact, he celebrates her and enjoys her being around and isn't, isn't freaked out by all of it. And I think in the past, pretty much every other boyfriend, even if they've, they pretended for a while that they were fine with it, they weren't, and Travis Kelsey is. And I hope Taylor saw that video. I hope it made her smile. And honestly, I just, I love Travis Kelsey. <laughs> I really, really do. And I'm biased because I'm a Chiefs fan. I was a Chiefs fan before I was a, or b before he dated Taylor Swift. But I, I just love how he's handled all of this. And I feel like it has to be such a breath of fresh air for Taylor to not feel this overwhelming anxiety like, oh my gosh, I am so famous and my fame is going to ruin the life of my partner. I think in the case of Travis Kelsey, at least as of right now, that is far from the truth. So loved it. Speaking of them, you know, being a match made in heaven, there was an article that came out yesterday from Entertainment Tonight. Now, I've, I've said this before on here that I believe, this is purely my own speculation, I don't have any like insider knowledge on this, but I tend to believe that ET online uh, and people, but more specifically ET, have like the inside source to the Taylor Swift camp. If you remember, the Taylor and Joe breakup was first reported on Entertainment Tonight. They got the scoop first. And so there's a part of me that thinks that they're the ones that have the inside source to Taylor's camp and get a lot of their information directly from the source. There's lots and lots and lots of other sources that we cannot trust out there, but I do feel like with them, 
I tend to trust what they say. And they had this article basically talking about Travis and Taylor's downtime, but they used some very specific language that I just, I wanna dive into a little bit more because they, and I'll get to like the full quote, but they said, quote, Travis and Taylor are looking forward to what the future holds. Okay, and I don't want to be one of those people who is like being a conspiracy theorist or reading into something too much. Because again, I think, and I don't want to put any unnecessary pressure on Taylor and Travis, not that they're like watching this video and caring about what I think. But I think we should allow people, especially in the public eye, to just like live their life the way that they want to live their life and not put this like unnecessary expectations or, or like anything like that on onto them. But I do feel like they're kind of soft launching an engagement. I really do. I, I, I feel like we're just getting these little breadcrumbs every few weeks of just this reporting, like Taylor and Travis are getting a lot closer. They're excited for what's to come. Like they're kind of guiding us into that direction so that when the engagement, if and when it does come, we're like, we were like, oh yeah, that makes sense. We've been told for a few months now, this is where they're headed. This makes sense that it's happening. Let me read the full quote and then we'll get back to my, my thoughts. So this is what it said. Quote, Taylor and Travis are soaking up their downtime together. They are appreciating the here and now and the love they share with one another. When they're able to just chill out, they love to hang out with their friends and family, travel, see new things and enjoy their privacy. They are grateful to have each other along for the ride and advocate and support each other across the board. While they're enjoying this moment, they're looking forward to what the future holds too. They want to continue to grow together and be happy and healthy. Their friends and family are still as supportive as ever. Okay, that's the full quote. Again, maybe I'm reading too much into this. Maybe I'm being delusional, but I just think that's where we're headed. Now, I don't think it's going to come tomorrow. In fact, I don't... Obviously we're heading into like the torture poets department. I think we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. So I don't think it's gonna come anytime soon because obviously she's gonna be like prepping for an album. But again, this summer like wouldn't shock me if the engagement came this summer. Please let me know in the comments if you think I'm being delusional, if you think I'm reading too much into all of this, like please share all those thoughts because I'd love to know if I'm the only one that feels this way or if other people are also thinking this too. Because again, I could be reading way too much into all of this, but I just feel like the breadcrumbs are being laid and this is where we're headed. Um, and again, they're also like both at a age where it makes sense. They're 34, going to be 35 this year. I think that it would make sense. It wouldn't be shocking. Maybe 10 years ago, if Taylor was thinking about getting engaged to a guy that she had only dated for a year, we'd be like, oh, it's a little bit soon. But I think... When you get to be in your mid thirties, you just, everything is fast tracked a little bit. You know what you want more. You are just more clear headed. You have a like better understanding of like what you're looking for, all those types of things. And so it wouldn't shock me. That's all I'll say. It wouldn't shock me. Okay, the final thing I wanted to discuss, and I kind of mentioned it, I think yesterday, but obviously, as I mentioned, we're, we're just a few weeks away from the Torture Poets Department. We haven't gotten any press from it yet. And I'm very curious if we'll get any press at all. And if we do get press, what kind of press will we get? Will she be going on talk shows? Will she be doing long form interviews? Will there be magazine covers? Like, I'm just, I'm very curious to see what she chooses to do with this album specifically, because I feel like when Midnight's came out, she did a, a, a bit of a bit of press. Like she, did, I think she did a couple late night shows, um, she was like around, but not too much. And I feel like her life is so chaotic right now. And we actually haven't really like heard her do press in a long time because she's been on tour and all that stuff. I mean, I guess she had the Time Magazine interview, but I'm just very, very curious to see what happens with this album cycle. Um, because again, she's the kind of person who could just drop the album and not say a word and it would do super well. Um, and like, I could see her also wanting the album to just sort of like speak for itself and not not have her have to speak for it in a lot of ways, um, especially because I think it's a very, it's a very, I assume emotional and heavy album, but even with Midnight's, right? Like she was doing a lot of social media stuff, like announcing all the track listings and like, she was just kind of more online talking about it. 
than she is now with this album. So curious to see what happens here. Will she do SNL, for example? I'm still pushing for the Travis Kelsey hosted Taylor Swift musical guest episode of SNL. I don't think it's going to happen, but that would be iconic and definitely break some sort of record, I think, um, in terms of people that would watch that show. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments what you think she will or won't do. Um, because I could see her going kind of a number of different ways with this. And um, I'm just very, I just kind of want, I want it to happen. Like I'm ready for the album to come out. I'm ready for all the, just all the stuff to come. Uh, I feel like we, we've been waiting for a while and I just wanted to get here right now. So that's it for our show today. Again, please share all your thoughts and comments and feelings in the comments of this video. I'd love to know what you guys think about all of this stuff. Am I being delusional? Am I right on track? Share it all. As always, please subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.